compound low flow percentage is one of those topics that's very misunderstood by many people sizing and selecting meters. When I go to a utility and talk to them about sizing and selecting meters, one of the first questions I ask is, do you use a combination of compounds and turbines throughout your utility? Now, there are some utilities that say, yep, we do. We properly size and select the meter according to the application. There are some utilities that say, no, we use turbines everywhere. And we've discussed why that's not the proper thing to do. But there are other utilities that feel correct in the fact that they use compounds everywhere. Now, their thought is that, hey, I'm going to use the meter that's going to get me all the revenue that I can. But that's not always the case because this concept of compound low flow percentage is not understood. If you're using a compound meter in an application where you don't have low flow usage right by the application, you're misusing or misapplying that meter. So let's review this concept. Compound low flow percentage is the ratio of your low flow registration to the overall total flow registration for that meter. Very easy to calculate. First thing you do is you calculate your total flow, right? You take the two different registers, you add up the numbers that are on those registers, right? You take the high flow plus the low flow, that gives you your total flow, very easy. The next thing you do is you actually calculate your low flow percentage. You take your low flow registration, right? And then you divide that by the total flow of the two registers, multiply that by 100, and you're going to have your low flow percentage. So here's an example. Let's say my low flow side of my meter says 12,000 gallons, right? And the total of the low flow register plus the high flow register is 144,000 gallons. I'm going to divide the 12,000 by the 144,000 times that by 100, and I'm going to get 8.3%. That's my low flow percentage. What does that tell me? If you follow these guidelines that I'm going to present to you, you now can take that information and understand if you're properly using a compound meter, how it's supposed to be used. So for instance, there's three guidelines that I'm going to present to you. The first scenario says this, if my low flow percentage is 5% or less, meaning that 5% or less of my overall usage is being registered by the low flow side of the compound. If that's the case, you may want to consider changing to a turbine meter. You're not really taking full advantage of the capabilities of that compound meter. And more than likely, that low flow percentage, you're not actually going to be losing a lot of revenue from just having 5% on that low flow side. The second guideline is this. It says, if your low flow percentage is between 5% and 25% of your overall usage, you're using a compound meter correctly. This is a proper use of a compound. The low flow registration side should be between 5% and 25% of your overall usage. Conversely, if your low flow percentage is more than 25%, right? Meaning I've got more flow than 25% on my low flow side, this is the case where you probably should consider changing to a disc meter because in this case your application is using more of your low flow capabilities now this doesn't always work out you need to make sure you look at the information that you would get from data logging this meter but these are guidelines to consider the one that i am mo most concerned about is that one between five and 25 percent understand that that is the proper way to use a compound meter so in the quiz that you're going to take later on in this course, I do want you to make sure you're considering this portion when you're actually selecting the right meter. Well, hopefully from that discussion now that you can actually take a look at some of your installations that you have now or future installation and understand if you're properly using a compound meter the way it's designed to be used. If you have any questions about today's topic, feel free to ask a question in the comment section below and I'll personally provide you with an answer. Or if you'd rather send a private message or have any questions related to metering or meter reading systems that I can help you with, be sure to connect with me on LinkedIn. Our question of the day, what other aspects of meter sizing, selection, and installation do you want to know more about? Please provide your question in the comment section below. 
be one of the first 10 people to reply to be entered into our weekly Smart Water Show giveaway. If you found value in this content, be sure to click the like button. And if you have a colleague that would benefit from listening to this episode on sizing and selection, be sure to share it with them by clicking the share button. We'd like to thank you for watching this video and we'll catch you next time on the Smart Water Show.